we're going to take this pile of parts, throw them at this bike, and see what happens. Welcome back everyone and thanks for joining me. On this video what we're going to do is we're going to take this mountain bike with a classic 2x10 drivetrain, front derailleur and everything. We're going to update it to a modern drivetrain uh, with a 1x front using the North Shore billet chainring, the Micro Shift uh, Advent X 1x10 system, and clean up the controls a little bit and make it a little more modern. We're also going to be focusing in on the Manitou Jack dropper post and installing it and modifying the frame a little because this is an internally stealth routed only dropper post. And this is a classic frame that does not have uh, any provisions for that. Now, one of the things we're looking to do with uh, changing up the drivetrain from a 2x10 into the Advent X 1x10 is cleaning up the left hand controls. On this side we have the brake, we have a shifter, and we have the, an existing dropper post cable. Uh, we have three cables here with a lot of slack. Just makes it very busy. There's a lot of stuff for your hand to do. So we're going to free that up. We're going to get rid of the front shifter so that way your left hand works the dropper post, your right hand takes care of all the shifting duties, splits everything apart, makes it nice and easy. Since I covered most of the Advent X system in a previous video, I will just post that link right here. I suggest you watch it. Uh, we get up close looks at uh, the cassette, the derailleur, and in that one, we use the drop bar levers and brakes. So the only thing we're gonna talk about today, as far as micro shift in the Advent X, is the mountain bike style shifter. Um, retails for about $30. And uh, this is a thumb-thumb shifter, meaning you go up and down gears using your thumb. And if you can see there, it has a very nice, that is a rubber textured pad. Um, make it easier so you're not slipping off if it's wet, muddy, whatever it is. Uh, so that piece is 30 bucks. Check out that video, look deeper into the system. Um, if you haven't watched it, just know that the MicroShift Advent X is coming in extremely cheap um, and it is lighter than the new Dior, uh, Shimano Dior drivetrain. So unless you're hung up on absolutely having the new 12 speed, if 10 and the range of 11 to 48 works, save some money, get some functionality, but you make that decision. Okay, the Manitou Jack dropper post. What you get in the box, obviously the dropper post itself, this one is a 30.9 diameter, 125 millimeter of available drop. Has a very nice machined and uh, micro adjust. That means the two bolts on the seat clamp post. That means you can get a much finer uh, tilt adjustment on your seat. And it's uh, we have two, bol two bolts applying the clamp. Uh, some of the cheaper models only use the setback head with one bolt and there's usually kind of notches to hold the seat post in place so that way it doesn't slide. Uh, you don't get as fine of a range of adjustment. Uh, this, the overall length is 400 millimeter seat post. That is not including the actuator on the bottom, which is removable. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're installing it in your frame and when you're trying to figure out what will fit your frame to make sure that you can put the seat post in and have the full range of height. Also in the box is the remote lever for it. This uses um, the uh, thumb paddle style that sits on top. Now this is compatible with one by and two by drivetrains. So you don't have to worry about the uh, kind of setup you have in your bike if this will work. This will work with both of them. Some of the other systems that are made to only work with one by drivetrains have the lever actuator that uh, mounts underneath kind of like where the front derailleur would be. Um, and you could upgrade to one of those if you choose to have that because it is a cable operated system, not hydraulic like the reverb we're gonna be getting rid of. All right, let's throw this on the scale and let's see, uh, let's see what we're dealing with. Five hundred and forty grams, not too heavy, not too light. It's kind of in there in the middle. 
not uh, for the weight that's actually not bad for what I believe this is a cartridge design not some uh, proprietary internal system I could be wrong please correct me if I am um, so we're gonna say this is just in the uh, the mid-range of the weights available uh, if you're going for a long dropper post you know lo long action dropper post a couple grams probably isn't your worry so don't worry about it we'll check out the speed and how easy it is to operate once we get it installed on the bike Let's get to that part. Okay, the chain rings we're taking off are a 34 and a 24 off of the 2x system. And we're replacing that with the North Shore Billet 30 tooth. Kind of, not exactly, but just about splitting the difference between the two. And the reason I chose this one is it has the variable tooth profile, so that way the chain won't drop off as easily. And it has a nice offset to it, so the spacing on the chain line splits the difference almost exactly in between those on the crank set. And here it is installed. You can see the offset and how well that matches up. Uh, this is a very high quality chain ring. Here is the rear of the cassette that we're taking off. Here is the rear of the cassette that we're putting on extreme gear change coming up. The drivetrain is on and we'll get an up close look at that and run it through the gears once we're all finished. Now we can start modifying the frame and getting the Manitou jack dropper post installed. Before I go any further, we are going to drill a hole in the frame. If you choose to do this on your bike, that is up to you. If it is under warranty, I suggest not doing it. This will void a warranty if the bike is new enough. Um, be confident in what you do if you choose to make this modification or have someone do it for you because you could ruin the bike. So, again, if you do this, it is by your own action. I am not responsible. Keep that in mind. First thing I want to do is make sure that where we're going to put the hole in the frame is going to be far enough down that we get, can move the seat post wherever we need to, slam it all the way in, and it won't bind up. So we can see with the existing height, if we line it up, that puts the seat post right about at the top water bottle bolt. And if we slam it down, we're still above the second one, right in line with the uh, front derailleur direct mount. So even though we're drilling a hole in the frame, I'm confident that if I put the hole right here where the direct mount derailleur is welded on at that there's going to be plenty of strength there and it's not going to be an issue because it's round tubing i also suggest you do not try to just go with this with a drill and go freestyle the bit's probably going to walk get a center punch get a hammer make your mark this is powder coated so we're going to probably going to tap it in there pretty good we do not want the drill bit to walk off of the round tubing while we're drilling it Let's do that now. Now I'm choosing to drill the hole off center instead of right down the middle. A, it's easier to get to. B, we're gonna be running the cable along the right side of the frame because the cable is gonna come out across the head tube and onto the left handlebar. So we're gonna go off center right below the second water bottle mount hole. Okay, we have a nice little mark. Start off with a pilot hole. I'm gonna use an eighth inch drill bit. Always drill a pilot hole. All right, here we go. Alright, as you saw, I started off nice and slow, made sure we were bit in there before we proceeded to speed up and punch through. If you just go with things full force with the drill, you're probably going to mess it up. Alright, now we're going to step it up to a 3 seconds uh, hole. 
This should be as big as we need to go for any, uh, you know, derailleur housing shifter cable that we're going to use to actuate the, the uh, seat post. First, I'm going to drill in to open up the hole. Then I'm actually going to walk the bit a little bit of an angle. So that way the cable will come out at a nice angle and run along the frame nicely. All right, there we go. Looks like the uh, modification is just about good. Uh, we're just gonna grab a piece of housing, make sure it fits. Inside the Manitou Jack Kit, it comes with everything you're gonna need for the hose. Uh, it comes with a nice Jaguar housing, cable, and everything you need. Let's see if we did a good enough job. Looks good to me. Let's move on to the next step. We removed off the bike an old RockShox Reverb external cable housing. Um, we're going to service this, and here's how we're going to service this. That's right, we're throwing it in the trash. That thing's been rebuilt twice, needs serviced again. For a suspension company that I usually like their products, I don't think they got it right with the Reverb, or at least the older ones. It's a crap design. Let's move on. The Manitou Jack is a mechanically operated uh, internal cable routing. If we take this off, you can see that little button right there. Maybe it's hard to see, but that is what's pressed and releases the seat post to go up. Here's the actuator screwed on the bottom. You can see this lever moves that. That's what pushes the button. Operated through this cable, And this is the cable that's going to come up through the seat post. And you can see, whenever we pull the cable, that is how it's going to actuate while it's inside the seat tube. But before we do that, we have to run this inside the frame and then up through into the seat tube. When you're trimming the remote housing length, there's two things you want to make sure that you do. One, Make sure that you have it trimmed long enough and there's enough slack so when you turn the bars all the way to the left, it doesn't put stress on the cable and activate the seat dropper. Uh, maybe you're going down a trail, you had the seat down, you hit a tight turn, boom, seat comes up and you didn't mean it to. The second factor is whenever the seat post is installed, the end of the cable is down into the frame. So you want to make sure there's enough slack in the system that if you want to remove the seat post or get to the actuator, you can do that without actually unbolting or taking the housing off just by pushing the slack down and having enough to get the seat post out. Both amounts of slack are pretty much the same amount, so start with start with the cable just coming out of the frame so that way you can get to it. Go ahead and run by hand the housing where you need it to go up to the remote lever, which I took the time off camera to install. I'm going to go ahead and trim it right there. We can fine tune it later, and that should be enough slack later on when we put the seat post in that it will have plenty of slack to not interfere with steering. Okay. Once you have the cable routed, you have the ends on and it's ready to go, and you're ready to set it into the actuator, you're either going to need to unscrew it part of the way or completely remove it off of the seat post so there's enough slack in the little lever to get the cable in. Once you have it in, make sure the cable is situated, make sure the head of the cable is in the lever. Then go ahead and tighten that all down. And I'm going to gently pull on the bottom of the cable. as we work the seat post into the frame. All right, looks good from here. Let's move up to the handlebar. Okay, starting up the handlebar with the end of your cable, they give you this provided a 90 degree noodle 
with the adjuster on here so you can adjust your tension. You're going to start with the adjuster facing the cable side. Pull all that slack out. Then we're going to start with the cable pushed into the remote housing. Through the lever, there's a groove on the top of the lever. And then push it down through the lever. We're going to pull all the slack out. Get everything nice and tight. And then we're going to adjust this set screw right here. And then we'll trim the cable. And that's how it'll operate. I have my first complaint with this lever. The set screw that they give you to hold the cable tension for the uh, remote lever is this little tiny set screw inside. The problem is, one, it's possibly made of the softest metal known to man. So when you try to tighten it down and to hold the cable in there, you cannot get it tight enough to hold the cable from not slipping without rounding it out. The good news, well, not good news, the way I'm going to fix it, it is the same thread pitch as the Allen head that is used on an ODI grip to hold the rings on. So. I'll be taking that out. I'll be putting this little bolt in that actually has a usable size Allen head on it. Uh, so complaint number one with the Manitou jack dropper post. Come on guys, you can do better. The seat post is installed. The remote lever is installed. Uh, like I said, that uh, little set screw kind of irked me. Now, when I put the seat on, they use the dual bolt uh, micro adjust head. What I like that they did is they actually placed the bolts at enough angle that you can get to it and use a regular multi-tool when you're out on the trail if you need to make an adjustment. I've seen some of the other seat posts where they use a two bolt system, but the bolts are running parallel to the actual seat post and they're in tight. The only way to get to them is with the little 90 degree Allen head that you don't carry with you when you're on a trail. So it makes it a real pain in the ass. You can get like a quarter turn at a time. Uh, so good job on that. There is no movement in that seat post. The bushings that they use to keep it, uh, keep it straight are nice and tight. No play at all. The lever, nice short throw to it. You can also adjust the tension if you need it a little tighter. Hardly any pressure needed. And as you can see with the seat post, it is easy enough that I can push it down by hand. Return speed. We might say that's a little on the slow side. It is a cartridge unit, so that is non-adjustable, so there's not much we can do about that. But I don't mind on the, I don't think it's that slow. I've had uh, the other seat posts, my old uh, command post. It used to jump up so fast and uh, it'd punch you right in the taint. So. I don't see it as that bad of a thing. This is uh, such an easy seat post to use. All right, let's. Uh, I'm gonna get all the cables buttoned up, get all the levers set, get everything dialed in. Let's take it for a shakedown ride. All right, let's give it a run through the gears on the Advent X. I'm a fan of that system as now we have it on two bikes in the family. I did weigh it earlier and uh, saved about 150 grams off of the drivetrain we took off, not including the front ring, just the uh, shifter, derailleur, uh, cables, and uh, what I took off was an XT cassette, an X9 derailleur, and an XO shifter. So they were higher end, lighter parts to begin with. So if you upgrade to an Advent X, off of an even lower grade system, you're gonna save even more weight. In the Manitou Jack Dropper Post, has an extremely solid feel. There is no play in it at all, no pogo, uh, rock solid. 
no side to side movement. The bushings they use to keep the seat in place, very stiff, feels very good. The double bolt head for adjusting the seat, very nice, solid, locks it down, usable angles. Return speed's a little on the slow side. And uh, that lever, not a huge fan of it. I'll probably actually change that out eventually for something with the one by um, what they call the moto lever or like the shifter style lever going under the bar eventually. Well, I hope like you like what you saw. You can use this information, make the decision for yourself. We'll see you next time. Let's go ride.